To get started with GCP, you need to get an account. So in each section for the services, I have the same structure. I have a why to use the service, what is the service, key considerations, how to do it, how to verify that you've done it, and then other things to know, which generally contains links to more advanced topics. So starting with creating an account, the uh, key concepts really are around what kind of account. So if I scroll down to that section, you can see there's really two types. There's a free tier where you can get $300 in GCP credits for new users. Then you'll be responsible for any charges beyond that. Or most of the bioinformatics groups I work with have organizational accounts. So in that case, you'd file some sort of service ticket and then you would be added to the organizational account on GCP. A really important difference is who pays for the bill. If it's free tier, of course you do, and it's great for experimenting and getting started. And $300 actually allows you to try out a lot of the services. If you're working with your organization's account, your organization or your research group is going to pay the bill. So in either case, it's important for you to have some understanding of what tools are available so you can understand how much the services cost. In addition to that, the physical data centers are located in various locations around the world and you want to request service instances like virtual machines from the service centers that are closest to you. So I've included a map as of this recording here so you can see if you're in Europe, for example, you've got a number of service centers. If you're in Brazil, you have Sao Paulo, so on and so forth. Now, once you decide what kind of account you're going to use for your research, then you want to set up that account. And I've gone ahead and done this already for a free account because there's a couple steps to it. You have to pick an email, you have to click on the free account, get, verify the email, give them a credit card for any charges that go beyond $300. For organizational access, it varies by your organization. Your account settings are going to be set up based on whether you have a free account, then you have the Google defaults, which are pretty modest in terms of what you can do in that account. So it's really just for trying things out. For your organization, it depends on how your organization is actually set up. For example, when I've been working with the Broad Institute at MIT, their organizational account has a really high limit for the number of uh, CPUs on virtual machines because they're processing really large jobs. So I think it's really great if you can to start with a free tier because the natural limits are a lot lower. For example, you can only use 24 CPUs. Even if you were to set up a large sized um, set of virtual machines inadvertently, uh, you'd be prevented from doing that in the free tier, for example, if you're just getting started. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take you over to the uh, console, which will be our main tool in this series for working with our GCP account. And um, I've set this up and signed in already. And you can see here I am over here. And you would sign in or sign out. And then within GCP, there's this concept of projects. So once you uh, set up your account, then you set up projects. And this would be, you don't want to match this to your research projects, basically. So they're containers for resources, whether it's buckets for files or whether it's virtual machines or Docker containers. Um, basically, they're like folders in a way. And they're great in terms of billing uh, as well, because you're going to understand by project what your service charges are. So just navigating you through this interface a little bit, it's a website. Um, I do find it works best on Chrome, and I have tested on Firefox as well. So you've got this main dashboard with these cards that give you information. For example, I have three buckets in this project. I have something called a cloud function. Um, importantly, you can see over here I have billing. So if this shows up in your account, then it's probably either enabled for your organization or you've got a free account. If you don't see this, that means that the permissions have been restricted and you're working with an organizational account and you're going to need to email your IT or your DevOps department to get um, information about your billing. So if you do see it, you can see inside of here, and I've just run a few things just to get a, a few charges um, showing up. And they're, Actually, I don't. I, this within my $300, it didn't actually co cost me anything. You can see I've um, run some analysis on a product called BigQuery. I've used cloud storage, and you can see over here, here's the billing information. And within this billing section, there are these subsections. I'm in the report section here. Importantly, you can set something called a budget by just clicking through here. I usually set a budget on a trial account 
of like 15 to 50 US dollars. And that way, if I forget to turn off a service or if I put some information in a bucket and I'm not using it, I'll get a notification that um, I should turn off my virtual machine, for example. And that's a really, really uh, useful way for me to start to understand my cloud spend. Now, in terms of working with this console, there's a couple uh, tips. So you got what's, what Google calls a navigation or hamburger menu, and this lists all the services kind of grouped together. So you can see, for example, here's the virtual machines. Here's the, if I scroll down a little bit, here's the storage bucket. But because this is a Google product, they have great search built in. So I can actually just type storage right here, and it will show me the storage service, and it will also give me common activities. So I tend to just type in here rather than using the menu. Um, I, I think it's a little bit faster, so you'll see me do that throughout this series. Um, other little things, you can collapse this if you want to. Um, you have these, uh, if you want to go back home, you can go over here. And um, your account will look slightly different because I've, I've made a couple objects just for demo here. So if I go into this object, I can use help. I would get notifications on activities that have occurred on this account. Um, if I want to send feedback to Google, I do that here. And then this opens another client tool we'll look at subsequently. And you can see here are uh, settings as well.